we are now approaching the end of the term and therefore I think one must not waste the time in talking about things which are not too much important. The most important problem, or let us say, the greatest, the greatest fault made by the people uh, is the so-called doctrine of the unfavorable balance of payments. I don't think that there is something in the whole field of economic studies which is uh, worse. There are other things which are also of the same type, of the same degree of, uh, 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 of, let us say, of illusory ideas, but there is nothing that is worse. The balance of payment doctrine I would recommend you to write a book about it because it is so very important as from the point of view that people have developed a radically wrong doctrine in order to, uh, uh, let us say, to uh, fight the, uh, the good policies and to substitute for them ridiculously bad policies. That means we have a, we have a, in the whole field of money, we have this, uh, this silly talk about inflation, not but never mentioning the real thing of inflation, but calling inflation the increase in prices. And the uh, 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 the main the main thing is that people are saying uh, and the main thing is that people want to defend the activity, the actions of the government. The government inflates, the government prints money, increases the quantity of money. Why? Because the government wants to spend more. And then they, they say this has nothing to do with the rise in prices. So this depreciation of the monetary unit is due to you. Why do you drink champagne? Why don't you uh, prefer something that is made in the now, the, this uh, silly doctrine can be very easily disproved if you point out what will happen if you don't buy foreign goods. If you uh, uh, stop drinking champagne and everything and consuming everything else that comes from abroad. Now, let us assume we, uh, every country considers the uh, foreign countries as non-existent. What will then be the fact? That you will consume only uh, champagne made uh, in the country. You, know. you will uh, not... Uh, you will not get any oranges because the oranges are not, uh, cannot be uh, replaced by something else. But what, what will this mean? If you uh, uh, never do these people 
uh, arguing this way, all right, champagne is responsible. Let us forbid the importation of champagne. What will people, what will the Americans do who used to spend some dollars for buying champagne? They will now buy something else. They will not take these dollars and give them to the government with compliments and say now, as we can't drink champagne, what could we do with the dollars? We can only give it to the government. Now, the same is true for all other articles. In the uh, year, 5,000 years uh, ago, uh, people consumed only what was grown, produced within their own district. We could go back to the same conditions. It is ridiculous to assume that any, ever anything else would happen. If we are sending champagne to uh, the champagne manufacturers, these champagne manufacturers will uh, use these dollars for buying something which is produced in our country. Nevertheless, and this is the astonishing thing. The problem is not our problem is not the problem uh, of uh, the unfa so-called unfavorable balance of payments. Our problem is how could such a silly doctrine be accepted? This is the real thing. And the, uh, and the, uh, the explanation could only be. There are some people who are interested in the, uh, in the uh, preservation of this doctrine. People who uh, want to, uh, that, in, that, in, that you should spend the dollars you are spending for champagne for buying their products, whatever these products may be. Now you have this doctrine accepted, taught, officially uh, 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 considered as a, the only doctrine, and what happens? How can this, is this is the problem of economics, not the, uh, not the problem of uh, uh, the uh, importation or exportation. How do you how do you change the situation? How do you how do you change the situation? Get rid of the old do that doctrine. Of what? Of the balance of payments doctrine. How do you counteract this teaching? Because the uh, the government increases the quantity of money. And because it increases the quantity of money, the, the prices, both of domestic and of imported goods, are going up. Yes, but how do you combat that doctrine? Yes. How do we solve this problem? Hmm? How do we solve this problem? How do you combat? How do you fight that doctrine? In explaining that there is another reason. You know, that the reason why... The, uh, uh, why uh, I have to pay today more for domestic things, you know. It's the same reason. I have the, uh, uh, the uh, government increases the quantity of uh, money, uh, therefore the prices are going up, therefore the, the employees of the subway are asking for higher wages, and therefore, the government, if it wants to operate, or not only the government, whoever wants to operate the subway must pay higher wages, and in order to pay the higher wages, he must ask for higher uh, fare. There is not, not the slightest 
opportunity given to explain this in a different way. To say, because we are drinking champagne, the uh, French franc is uh, going up and the dollar is going down, is simply uh, is, is a doctrine that is not even worthwhile to be discussed. And you can't defend it. Uh, there are people in the administration today, though, who are fearful of too much increase in the money supply. Don't, isn't this based on some understanding of the cause of higher prices? If they do not admit this, the higher prices. And but they are, do. Uh, no, they. no, no. If they, if they do not admit the whole doctrine and then say yes, but not too much. Yeah. You know. uh, the, uh, if you uh, uh, would say uh, uh, it is not, uh, if somebody were to say the best thing to improve conditions would be to burn down all our department stores. And if somebody They're trying that, object, <laughs> Yes. And if somebody were to object, he will say, uh, don't burn down the whole department store. Uh, burn only, destroy only the upper floors. This is the thing. We have the, 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 the scandal of economics, of so-called or pseudo-economics consists precisely in this. The people are, all people are talking about the balance of payments. <clears throat> the, the Wall Street Journal and their editorials for years, they've been blaming the, uh, the trouble with the balance of payments on the inflation. And you wonder whether or not it sometimes doesn't penetrate or it doesn't, doesn't reach a wider audience. Uh, we have a bad balance of payments. No. no. This, this is the only, this is simply idiotic. And then, what is, uh, uh, what is the uh, individual in this uh, interpretation? Do you also have a bad balance of payments? Does an individual have a, bal a bad balance of payments? You, of course, it is possible. You, you, ha you have bought more. <coughs> you have not the money. Then uh, it depends whether you did it because <coughs> you, you were uh, uh, stupid or whether you did it because you were a criminal. And if you were a criminal, they say this man bought uh, uh, let us say uh, champagne, drank it out, also he knew that he does not have the money to pay for it. This is one possibility. But if he had, the, if he did not know it in advance, if he was so stupid that he didn't know that he will uh, uh, not be able to pay, then nothing happens to him. Then it's just a loss for the, uh, uh, for the seller. There are these two uh, uh, Roman formulas, caveat emptor, for instance. Caveat emptor means that when you uh, uh, buy something, uh, you must, you are, uh, uh, you cannot blame somebody that you he gave you something wrong, you know. If you buy a horse and this horse has some uh, uh, some uh, disease, then uh, the caveat emptor, uh, then uh, you can only uh, blame yourself that you did not look upon his diseases before. And this is the, the thing that we still, that we do not admit, you know, people don't uh, take the, uh, uh, 
this doctrine alone. The state has also an influence. Point to Paris. Do you realize what they mean? What has an influence? They say this, uh, if you criticize this doctrine, then they say that you cannot deny that it is the fact of the unfavorable balance of payment has some influence. No, it has no influence at all. There is nothing in the world that people are buying and selling and then they discover that they have uh, bought uh, things for which they cannot pay. What they call, hmm? and what they call, and... You know, what the, 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 the thing was this, the government began to uh, uh, debase the currency. When this happened in the Roman Empire in the third century, it didn't have any international effects because there was no international trade at that time. The trade was was Roman trade, and then there were some nations outside. When it happened in the development, in the ages of the development of foreign trade, then the result was that the exchange ratio between the uh, domestic and the foreign money changed. It changed because the value of this money changed, because the, the uh, 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 let us say, uh, the German money or the of ch- certain German uh, states was now lighter in, uh, uh, in weight of precious metals than before. What, what, what is the re- you were just mentioning the Roman formula caveat emptor. No. I say you mentioned a few minutes ago the Roman. The Roman emperor. Ca- ca- caveat emptor. Hmm? Caveat emptor. Yes. Well, what relation does that the, the have to what you're discussing means, tonight? means that you, if you are Let buying, the buyer beware. buying, beware. Yes, but what relationship does that have to what you are discussing? Uh, concerning the prices of the things that you, which you bought. And this is, uh, this is the, uh, one of these things, which the, uh, the whole, uh, all, 90% of what is, uh, uh, published about these problems contains at least a little bit of this balance of payments doctrine. Uh, there are, yes, these people say it is true, this is also inflation, but you can't deny that the balance of payments plays a role. But I deny what, it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what they call the uh, an unfavorable balance of payments when you're spending, when you're sending more money abroad than you at the moment oh, okay. it's because you're buying something yeah if you if you were to say just buying something for which you don't have the money that means to go to a shop and to to buy something uh, he the, the owner of the shop uh, is full of confidence and sends you the, uh, let us say, the champagne, you drink it, and uh, then you say, but I'm sorry, I don't have the money, I can't pay. You know? this, is, this is not a, a balance of payments problem, this is a swindle. You know? well, what is the euro dollar in all of this? Hmm? What is the euro dollar? You said you were going to explain that. Yes. Now, the, the uh, uh, dollars are not, you, you, in, uh, in big business, in greater trade, you do not take, uh, you do not come with, uh, with your briefcase 
and take out the dollar bills and pay with them. You have, uh, you pay with, uh, with checks, that means with transactions, with, uh, with uh, uh, the transfer of an account of dollars which you have. And these dollar accounts are of a different character. Uh, that means they are not uh, in, in domestic affairs. You have an account with the Chess Bank. Uh, if you have to uh, pay uh, somebody, you give him a check on the Chess Bank and he, got, he gets it from the Chess Bank. But uh, there are various such uh, accounts which are not so simple, especially if they, uh, you cannot get them to pay you when you are abroad, when you are, or when you want to transfer into another currency. And uh, these uh, uh, various dollars mean you have an account uh, in, with, with the bank. Uh, you have their dollars, but these dollars are only the, the uh, power of these dollars is only limited. You cannot, you cannot. Uh, change these dollars, especially and this is against gold dollars. And the abroad you can though, can you not? I there mean, are, it, it, there there's are a hundreds of different types. Uh, but when the dollars are once out of this country, they are transferable eventually. You know, what is the dollar today, you see? The dollar uh, uh, the, the dollar was a quantity of gold and uh, it didn't make any difference whether this quantity of gold was in your pockets, real gold, or whether it was on your account in a bank because if you wanted the gold you could go to the bank and you could say to the, uh, to the man there, I want pieces of gold. Try it today. He, he will, first of all, he will consider you as a lunatic. <laughs> Secondly, he will say, did you, uh, what did you do in the last uh, years? Did you sleep? Did you not read the newspapers? Do you sleep? We don't. We don't give gold. You know. The paper is the, has, is the same as gold. There is no difference according to the law. But according to the law, if you had, uh, if you had uh, uh, a banknote of twenty dollars, you could go to the uh, to the issuing bank and ask for the gold. You know, so they, so they say you are lunatic. You know, you didn't know what is going on. Well, See, and you wouldn't get it. Huh? You wouldn't get it. No. A euro dollar is an unbacked. What? No, it's a dollar. Euro dollar, dollar is a, one of these kinds. You can, you can, uh, certain, certain uh, accounts, you know, are in euro dollars, and you can transfer from one euro dollar account to another euro dollar account. But if you want to transfer from this into a gold account. Then they say, no, this is, this is impossible. You know, the governments have made, the, have, have, uh, uh, with the aid of the banks, of course, and by, them, by and using the banks, have brought about a situation in which it is possible for them to increase the quantity of dollars without being under the necessity to redeem these dollars in gold. If you ask uh, 
if you ask what is today a dollar, then this is something which uh, you have uh, uh, in the bank, but for which you can't get gold. If you are asking for gold, then these people may say uh, this is not uh, not usual. This is not there. You need the, the whole thing. You must not ask the logic of the thing, you know, because it doesn't have any logic. Mm -hmm. Because the government try to conceal the fact that uh, they have issued a, uh, an enormous quantity of fictitious dollars, that they are increasing the quantity of dollars without increasing the quantity of gold. And the, the uh, root of the is of the, let us not say, tell it an evil because the governments don't call it an evil. Uh, the root of the whole story is that the uh, governments try to prevent you from redeeming your paper dollar into gold. Uh, the banknote said originally, and it is in the legal uh, uh, formulation didn't change. If this man, if a man appears with this banknote at the bank that had issued it, he will, without any delay, without any delay, he said, receive gold. And now you can say uh, the problem of delay is not uh, no longer mentioned, he will never get the gold. The governments have increased the quantity and prevent the circulation of gold. When did you last get a piece of, uh, a gold piece of dollar? When did you last had an interview with a gold dollar? Do you remember it? No. <laughs> you do not even realize this. You do not you 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 you, uh, you see when uh, 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 when I visited Paris in 1912 or 13, um, I uh, uh, had a check and I went to. Your bank, to present it to check, you know, because you, it is, you can't travel with great quantities of money. And then these people gave me, uh, they asked me whether I want paper or gold, and I said, they give me gold. Why not? And they gave me uh, uh, five pieces of 20 pieces one of these pieces was Greek. It was not uh, French, but it was Greek. If I had, uh, uh, I had, I had the right to say that I don't take this Greek piece of gold. Today, one would be considered as a as a lunatic if one were to refuse. Of course, I did not. I took it. Of course, there was no reason at all not to take it. But uh, as uh, Greece was not a member of the Latin Monetary Union, it, uh, you had theoretically the right in Paris to say, no, <laughs> I don't take it. Was it hard to spend that Greek gold piece in Paris? 
Yes, of course, because the, gold, because, uh, the people were not so silly, they realized very well. Oh, they, they did take it? They take it. Not, not uh, perhaps uh, people who were uh, uh, not familiar with, with business conditions, but others. But they wouldn't do that now. You wouldn't get any gold now. No. Now, and this, and this was the, uh, th there was really good circulation. Now, when uh, the, uh, when Austria uh, stabilized its currency and went over to the gold standards, you know, the people in Austria, they are not used to world pieces. And therefore they did never ask for it and they remained in the bank, you know. And in, this, in circulation there were very rarely there appeared the gold piece. Why? Because they knew if they needed gold or that they didn't need practically gold if they were not, not uh, in the uh, business of jewelry or so on. Uh, the, uh, uh, if one, one needed gold for export in order to invest abroad, then the bank gave it at that time. And uh, in, in those countries in which the gold standard had already been in practical use for many decades, people were used to get uh, gold pieces like everything else. What uh, you can't look around, you will not find today somebody who will tell you that he ever had a, an outer with the gold piece. And why is this? Because the uh, governments have the governments don't call this now gold, don't call inflation. What is an inflation? The increase in the quantity of, of paper money. Would you explain the connection between this and balance of payments and Gresham's law again? What? The connection between balance of payments and Gresham's law Gresham's law, you see, when it uh, when, uh, says something which is very simple. If you have the choice to pay a debt in a lighter way, in a, in, in a way which means less for you, and to know way which means more for you, you will choose the light of it. When you, when there, uh, uh, when, uh, and this is the reason, the, it's the operation of Gresham's law, that you don't see pieces of gold. Because the gold piece has today the, uh, a higher value on the market than the paper. And therefore, if you have two pieces, one of gold and one of paper, and you have now to determine whether you should use the one or the other for paying, somebody, you will take the one that is of less value to you, of less power, you know, because you can uh, uh, use the gold piece for payments abroad, and therefore, because you can use it for payments abroad, the businessman, the, uh, the money changer will give you a little bit more. And this, this is the thing, you know, is the monetary problem. 
the, the governments are increasing the quantity of money. And then they, uh, ag- they are increasing it, also they knew that this was against the uh, usages of business not so long ago. The law is hoarding good money. Hmm? Driving, driving good money out of the market. Yes. When they say, when uh, Gresham's law is formulated in this way, that bad money uh, drives the good money out. What does this mean, bad money and good money? If you have, if you have two pieces of money, w- one which you can <coughs> sell with a uh, azure, this means with a little bit more than the other, you will use the, the cheaper one. Can, can, you have in, can you have inflation without paper money? Uh, yes, the, in the ages in which there was currency in the basement before. Coin flipping. Yeah, it could happen, but this is something like that. Yeah. You also can have inflation by an increase in gold money. Yes, but the, the, the danger is not very great. Mm-hmm. This is the same. You know, right, the government there is one class of people who never ought to complain about disordering monetary affairs. These are the people connected with the government because they are, they are making these things. Instead of saying, I don't have the money, the money the government pays. The government never uh, admits that it, that it has, that it ought to have money but doesn't have money. Did the Romans have paper money? Hmm? Did the Romans have paper money? No, but this, the, for, with the Romans this was a problem of technology. Uh, they didn't have paper, they didn't have printing, uh, and for, uh, and, uh, therefore they didn't have they were very happy. <laughs> yeah. You see, the, the difference is precisely this, that before the, the uh, uh, 17th century, uh, the method of inflation was currency debasement. It was an open swindle, you know, because the government said uh, this is a coin, a gold coin, or a silver coin mostly, a silver coin with a definite weight. But they had mixed more copper into it than usual. They reduced the content of silver and increased in order to have the same size the content of copper. So that the uh, uh, coins got a reddish color. Uh, You wouldn't call credit cards and American Express checks uh, in inflation money because they're not legal tender? Is that the reason? Because they are because they are when I, when you, when you go to, uh, 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 let us say this, you buy in advance your meals by getting a, a number of coupons. Every coupon you pay is for one meal. This is not an increase in the quantity of money. He has sold you a meal, or he has sold you something for a definite quantity. The the, uh, American Express sells you 
American money. And what you are getting when they give you is not money, but but a title to get a definite quantity of money. That if this money deteriorates because the government uh, increases its quantity, then of course this what you have bought is also losing purchase value. Well, how about credit cards? Hmm? How about credit cards where you buy something on if credit? Some, then somebody gives you credit. When you, you go to you go to a restaurant and you eat. Now this what you uh, uh, your your meal is a credit because you pay only later. You don't pay for every uh, uh, for every dish they bring you to the to the tables. You pay at the end. The uh, the, uh, the problem is that the government is now has now taken over the uh, production <coughs> of money and uses this for an in, for inflation for increasing. Uh, personal credit and inter and business credit has nothing to do with inflation at all. It's no, just an interpersonal no, no, arrangement. No. Mm-hmm. You you are. Uh, you are buying something and uh, you pay now or later or so on. Uh, it was in the, uh, in the uh, 17th century, uh, it was still impossible to uh, print nicely banknotes. You know, and then the, with the improvement of the technology of printing, it became easier for the governments to do these things. And I do not, I, I do not want even to blame the governments for what they are doing. I want to blame them for the lies with which the government tries to uh, conceal what it, what it has done. How would you explain the term the uh, the exporting of the inflation? Hmm? When they speak about exporting the ex- the inflation, is that a, a, the increase in the supply of money that goes outside of the country? If people in Europe would hoard or use this the dollar, this does not mean you know going outside or inside of the country does not mean so much today as the governments are always talking. What does this mean, you know, outside of the country? Do you know precisely when you take your, your, your clothes, when you uh, take your clothes, do you know what com- came from inside and what from outside of the country? You are not such a technologist that you could do this easily. Hmm? Uh, isn't the number of dollars, actual dollar bills being held by foreigners helping to uh, keep our inflation in this country from being felt. That means... Is when, that in exporting the inflation? That means when the, uh, the uh, uh, various countries have different uh, policies with regard to inflation. Some countries are inflating more, some countries are inflating less. Uh, let us say this. England was inflating in the period after uh, the First World War, during the First World War. But compared with Germany, the inflation was very mild. You know. Therefore, when the, uh, 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 a German who owned some uh, uh, British banknotes, he considered himself as very happy, <laughs> as he said, I have, uh, he did not, uh, he did not realize it is to the same extent uh, in, in, which, in which he realized 
the German inflation that there was also an English inflation. Well, if, if the United States gives foreign aid to a country in terms of dollars, the country uses the dollars of a central bank to inflate its own currency. Because, because for such a country with uh, hopeless inflation, you know, the American dollar is hard money. Cash, what money? <laughs> because it has, it is, you know, you, you could, uh, when you uh, uh, go, uh, are living in such a country, you are uh, uh, misguided by the fact that uh, the American currency uh, loses much less and much more slowly purchasing power than their currency. Therefore, you say in, uh, 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 you know, uh, for instance, uh, one of the Latin American countries, uh, we were every morning when we came to the breakfast room, uh, there was inscribed the price of the dollar, because every day it was more in domestic currencies than it was the day before. But in uh, uh, American purchasing power, <laughs> it was every day, even this was a loss as against the preceding day. These dollars that are held, uh, let us say, even by central banks in, in different countries as reserves, so let us say if, if people, citizens in foreign countries, they'll hold the uh, dollars instead of gold, uh, uh, would that be a, a part of the euro dollars? Would, would that be part of the euro dollar supply? No. This is very different, you know. These are in books and so on and so on. Uh, and controlled by <coughs> from various points of view by various banks and so on. What it, what we have to realize is that uh, the habit of increasing the quantity of money became so uh, popular that the governments do no longer have any uh, moral or economic uh, uh, inhibitions. They say they are talking as if uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, now they are telling the budget should be in equilibrium. Of course it should be in equilibrium. But what is not said is that from a certain point of view, one has to say that the budget that is not in equilibrium is uh, uh, just hurting the interests of all, of a very great part of the population. Not of all, because there are people, the debtors are uh, not hurt. Are euro dollars then dollars which are held by foreigners? Mm -hmm. by Europe? Are euro dollars dollars which are yeah, held dollars by foreigners? Yeah. 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 Whether they are yeah. central banks or, yeah. Uh, yeah. or not. But certain countries that... And you have, you, you have the, the, and then you cannot even describe what this is, because this changes. It changes from day to day. And what it means is, now, and this is yet now what I want to say, who profits and who loses? First of all, all those are losing who have debts, uh, who have uh, assets, in this 
σε καρίτσι. And the most, uh, the most important point is this. Every uh, body in the United States under present day conditions who has taken out an insurance policy, who has uh, bought bonds, who has a, a, who has a, a savings deposits, is losing day for a day, you know. And the government does not go around and tell people, do you realize that you are losing this as against yesterday evening, when you went to sleep yesterday evening, you were, you had a greater purchasing power than you have today? No, this is not said. And the government, and this is, this is why uh, inflation is so bad, you know. The government, if people realize, or they say, it's an evil. Uh, I don't want to say whether it's an evil or whether it's a benefit. I want to say what it is. It means a transfer from the, let us say, from the bondholder uh, to the man who is bound to redeem one day. For instance. But the uh, financial men of large corporations largely know this now. They yeah, expect corporation. It. Now look, the people who own common stock are the debtors in regard to the bonds issued by this corporation or to the uh, that this corporation owes no, the profit for instance is when you uh, when you are uh, in, when you own common stock and this corporation has debts, as most of the corporations have, either with the bank or with the perhaps issue bonds or something like that. Then uh, the uh, uh, stockholder profits. But it could be that, the, and it is very often the case, that the policy is so bad in general of the government, that also the stockholders are losing. But this is a different affair. It has nothing to do with, no. uh, with their relation to the... How, does the How does the stockholder lose under those circumstances? The, when, the, when the government uh, makes a policy which increases the burdens of the stock. Taxes and labor, taxes type and costs. labor and, uh, uh, and regulations. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Mm -hmm. What about uh, people with mortgages? They profit. A mortgage is a claim, and if you and this claim is in the country's currency, and therefore you, the, the mortgage does not protect you. You are uh, the, uh, you are losing every day continually as against the owner of the uh, property. The owner of the property profits from the fact that the, uh, that the debts are melting. Hmm? Because he's getting back cheaper yeah. money. So and therefore also, because people don't realize what's going on, the, uh, the inflation is bad. Mm. Well, it works both ways. Yeah. You see, yeah. you see, uh, take for instance the case 
an extreme case. These cases of the countries where the currency became zero. Now, what, what, what do you know about? What, what can these people say? What can, could they do? They could not, they, if they have uh, sold their uh, claims in time, uh, the question was, and how to invest them? Take a, a simple citizen. He has, a, a, he owns common stock. He has not the slightest idea whether this corporation will profit or lose on account of the inflation and so on. And therefore, we have all these desires. And it plays every, in, in everything it plays. And it is a, uh, uh, take for instance one problem which people did not yet very much take into account. A considerable part of the foundations uh, property and of the property of the universities and so on consists precisely in such uh, assets and uh, if these assets if these uh, if these people who were responsible for the investment were very cautious then they would have preferred they would have said what is what we should buy is the bonds of the first class corporations the first class or second class or one, the bonds are melting away. I told you the story of this man, of this American who left uh, two million dollars uh, um, for the establishment of an orphanage in Austria, the foundation. He made the foundation. His will said, I leave this to the foundation. And then the, these two million dollars were sent from uh, the United States to Austria. Uh, it's an Austrian foundation. And according to the Austrian law, the property of foundations had to be invested in government, first class government bonds, Austrian government bonds. And this was done, and then these bonds were zero. The two million, the two million dollars disappeared completely. You could ask now, who profited from this? If you want to write an essay about it, then it's all right. It's not so easy to say. Who profited? Do you remember his name? Hmm? Do you remember his name? No, this is not, not of importance for this thing. You see, the question who profited from it is the uh, question uh, who uh, uh, who were the debtors of the Austrian bonds, government bonds, in which it had been, it was the Austrian government, it disappeared. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, 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 in Germany, they later gave back 15% of the value of the things. That means if this had been in Germany, not 100% would have disappeared, but only 85. And then people uh, must realize that the, uh, uh, 
all our uh, institutions and all individuals are closely connected with the problem of the purchasing power of the monetary union. If a man uh, makes some provision for his future, for his family, for his uh, children, for uh, uh, things that could happen to him, this is everything always expressed in the terms of the money. Is this from you, Mr. Yeah. Well, that gets brief. Yeah. Now I think I have uh, sufficiently dealt with the problem of inflation in this regard. That inflation, when it is slight, is a slight idea. It is another thing. It happened again and again, you know, that countries, this was in the, uh, in the in, let us say, for instance, in the 19th century. Several countries again and again took recourse to inflation. But then they stopped it after some time and so the, the, there were not losses of 100%, but of smaller quantity. Sure. Uh, you see, I don't like to criticize a very bad theory, and the theory to which you refer is such a theory. It explains, it say, it makes a difference between free capitalism, feudalism and capitalism. Now, there's certainly, there's no doubt that there is such a difference. But, it says, the characteristic of pre-capitalism was that the uh, goods, that they followed the formula, goods were exchanged against money, and money against, against goods. Goods are used to get money to buy father goods for consumption of feudal holdings. Capitalism follows the contrary formula, money, goods, money. Money is used to get goods to sell for more money with profit. Now, I think, also this is a famous professor whom I knew very well, who said it, that this doesn't have any meaning at all. It is not true that, first of all, uh, the uh, 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 always production, if it is not for one's own consumption, produces first goods. These goods are exchanged for money, and the money is exchanged for the goods which they want to consume. Therefore, it, it is not. There is no difference that you say. Uh, the money is at the beginning. Money is not at the beginning. At the beginning are the goods. Except when the government prints extra money, then money starts something. When the <laughs> government interferes, then the same way think is that. Yeah. 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 Say's law yeah. says goods yeah. come first, Cain says money. Yeah, yeah I guess that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that the crucial distinction between pre-capitalistic times and capitalistic times is the extent of the division of labor and specialization and trade? Yes, and especially the fact that in pre-capitalistic times, people were 
first of all producing for their own consumption. They were the, uh, uh, if a man uh, uh, produced, uh, he did it because it was for his and his family's consumption. Uh, there were no, there was no traffic, no trade in uh, many articles. You know. uh, it would have been, uh, 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 I, I told you, I think once, or I, other seminars, I told the story of an. Um, men who discovered capitalism. Uh, he was at, uh, at an officer who were in charge of the uh, mess of the tape of the community uh, kitchen of the officers of a division of, of a division of the army. And he and one day this man told you it was in the nineteenth century, he told you the following story. One must it is really unbelievable what things happen in the world. We used to pay in our officers, we used to pay for egg one heller, filler of the money. And now, looking through the books, uh, controlling the men, I discovered that we paid now two hellers for an egg. Twice the original price. And I thought, oh, somebody is uh, taking away some money from us. Why does this happen? And uh, then, uh, making inquiries, I discovered that while we had previously bought from the various uh, farmers' wives the village uh, the eggs and paid one filler for an egg we have now to pay two fillers why? because there is a man who goes around and pays two fillers for an egg and do you know what this man does with this egg? He puts them into boxes and he mails his boxes into a foreign country. <laughs> and while in this foreign country, which is Germany in this case, while in this foreign country the eggs are more expensive. Our eggs he sends them to Germany and sells them for twice the price we have. This is not a scandal. And when people told him, and don't we buy something from the Germans? He said, yes, we are also buying something from the Germans. And we are paying for it more now. You see. He did not, this man thought that it, it was his, it was the privilege of people living in the country that their eggs should be reserved for sale, not to be exported and so on. But imports, of course, who bought something cheap, made something cheaper, they are approved. This is, this is the way in which people do it. The, uh, the, uh, uh, people 
where I would say in this regard an economist like Visa also made a mis misunderstood the situation. Visa said that the development of capitalism, the development of trade between far distant countries, brings about a tendency toward higher prices. And he pointed out, you went, you used to go uh, in very similar way in which this officer said the thing. You used to go to a place in the country where everything was very cheap and you lived there and, uh, for some vacation weeks and then you returned to your city. Now you discover that prices that were very low in this village into which you went for to enjoy the summer. The prices are going up in this village. And you are asking, why are prices going up? And do you know what I discovered? I discovered that, this, that there are people who are selling the things which we used to buy at higher prices to other people. And do you know what these people are doing with these other things? They are sending them away into foreign countries and selling them at still higher prices. Is this not a scandal? Out the question. And, won't, and do we not buy something from other countries in which it is cheaper? He said, yes, but this is our right. Governments that want that tried to increase their spending by printing for this special purpose additional banknotes. As long, don't forget what I said again and again. As long as you take away from one group and give to another group, then there is a price rise in one regard and a drop in prices in the other. If the government wants to raise the salary of some group of government employees, it has to tax people and use the taxes that they are paying in order to raise the salaries of some people. Then what the one group of people is spending more, the other group must spend less. By and large, prices remain unchanged. But if the government adds something newly printed money for the sole purpose of raising the salaries of some people without decreasing at the same time and for the same reason the salaries of other people, then the result is that for the same quantity of consumers' goods, there is now a greater quantity of money in the hands of people who want to buy them. And then this greater quantity of money brings about the increase in prices. And this is the problem of inflation. And the government call, does not want to call inflation these things. The government prefers to use other terms. So who gets this money now? What money? 
They said new money is it the defense what? industries? What? Who gets the new money the government is now creating? The those to whom the government pays it, you know. For instance, the government raises the salaries of some people. Or the government says we need more uh, Congress, arms. Congressmen. Eh? Salaries of congressmen. Congress, congressmen, you know. Or we need more arms. Uh, how can they get more arms? In pink prices high enough to uh, move the businessmen to change from the production of peace goods for armaments. The space project, hmm? the space project yeah. is pays high salaries. Yeah. This is true. This, this is the system which we... Uh, the, um, the inflation of this kind does not have the same uh, pattern of malinvestment that credit expansion... Yeah. We do not discuss the problem whether the government should spend more or less. We are discussing the problem whether the government ought or could or should spend by increasing the quantity of money for this special purpose. You know. we, we do not discuss the problem the government may say uh, restrict the income of some people and raise the income of other people. Uh, do no longer uh, 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 pay A but pay B. This is something which we do not discuss. But what we are discussing is the problem whether the government should try to increase its expenditures 